Welcome to Learn Commerce PU Online Classes. forget to like our video and subscribe our YouTube channel for all the updates. Hello students, welcome to history online class. In the last class, we have discussed about the political achievement of Akbar. Akbar as a great administrator is political achievement and administration. Now we have to discuss a religious policy of Akbar. Akbar was a religious tolerant. In the medieval period, there was no religious tolerance, but because of the rule of Akbar, he followed the policy of tolerance. And that is liberal and tolerant. Akbar was a liberal and tolerant ruler so far as religion was concerned and he abolished pilgrimage tax for example during the period of Sultanate of Delhi a pilgrimage tax was imposed on Hindus when the Hindus visited their holy places they have to pay the tax but now Akbar abolished this tax and one more tax was paid or tax was imposed during the period of uh, you know Sultanate of Delhi that is Jazia so Jazia is also a special tax on Hindus so this Jazia was also cancelled by Akbar and people were allowed to build places of their worship. There was no rules and regulations. Even though Akbar was the follower of, you know, Islam in the beginning, he never opposed the practice of any other religion in his kingdom. He allowed the people to build a place of worship. And that is that shows the Akbar's generosity and he took part in all the celebrations of Hindus. Whenever there was a celebrations, festivals of Hindus, Akbar used to participate in such activities. And more than that, he was a social reformer. Akbar was a social reformer. He stopped child marriage and sati system and he encouraged widow remarriage. Widow remarriage was encouraged. So there will be a question. What are the social reforms of Akbar? So, that is the stopping of child marriage, sati system and encouragement of widow remarriage. So, these things are absolutely a great contribution of Akbar. And then, one more thing, what we can see, Akbar introduced a new religion, what we call Din Ilahi. Din Ilahi was a religion, a new religion introduced by Akbar. Fifteen eighty-two, and this religion based on peace and brotherhood. The main theme of the religion was, you know, peace and brotherhood. And he established this in 1580, 
to he built a building called ibadat khan ibadat khan so this ibadat khan was a building established by akbar for the purpose of discussion religious discourse of various scholars belong to various religion they used to come to that particular place they used to discuss about the religion and akbar he collected all the good principles of different religion all the good principles of a different religion and established a new religion called that is din ilahi or tauhid tauhid e ilahi tauhid e ilahi or divine monotheism divine monotheism this is the one of the important uh, contribution that is a uh, religion religious activities and then he constructed it that is uh, ibadat khan at patehpur sikri and he assimilated as i said he assimilated all the good principles of different religion and provided a new shape and what are the principles of this particular din ilahi so there will be a question for five marks write a short note on din ilahi some important principles followers of this religion they were expected to respect all religion all religion should be respected by the members of this religion secondly worship of fire worship of a fire celebration of birthday celebration of birthday birthday with the other religious people not only among themselves but other religious people and the member of this religion he should not marry old women or minor girl minor girl and at the same time you know these are all the principles but you have to think that some of the time what we have seen a people will force i mean forced by a person to join this particular religion but akbar he never forced any people to join the religion in lahi and here raja birbal was a staunch follower of the ilahi and after the death of akbar what happened this religion also disappeared there was no person to lead this religion after the death of akbar well later we have to discuss the patronage to the literature akbar was a great pattern of literature too during his period many literatures were translated into persian language from sanskrit and various scholars they have translated different books of sanskrit for example mohammed you know mahabharata was translated by najib khan and uh, even ramayana by haji ibrahim atharva veda 
by phi z and panchatantra narada mayanti and even raja tarangini these are all the some important books translated into persian language from sanskrit some important scholars of the pda there were number of scholars but we have to note some important scholars during that period were tulasi das sur das this tulasi das he wrote ramacharita manasa ramacharita manasa and surdas he wrote sursagar sagar sursagar and apart from this even some historians they also flourished during the period of him akbar and important uh, uh, historians during the period of akbar that is abul fazal abul fazal he wrote akbar nama akbar nama muntakab 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 ul taurik badaun badaun so there were the important uh, historians among them abul fazal was uh, a famous one especially he written babar i mean sorry akbar nama and then what are the contribution made by akbar to the field of uh, art and architecture apart from this literature or any other aspects art and architecture a various palaces were built by akbar a large number of buildings in different places and a various uh, you know palaces we can see apart from this balan darwaza panchamal Jodh Bai's Palace, Diwani E Kaza, Diwan E Kaza, Diwani E Am, Diwan E. um all these buildings uh, at agra agra so this is what the various uh, constructions during the period of us akbar so it shows that akbar given importance to all the field where we can see an all round development the economy art architecture polity judiciary so on and so forth every field was uh, touched by akbar and that is why we call akbar as the great not simply we are calling because of uh, this achievement so this is about uh, akbar and we have to particularly see now what are the contributions made by mughals as a whole this is about akbar's contribution but mughals as a whole including akbar 
various other rulers also contributed during their period. What are the contributions? The Mughals' contribution. Mughals' contribution. That is education and literature. Education and literature. Mughal rulers, they have given importance to education. At the same time, literature. When they gave importance to education, that led to the growth of literature. It is automatically, it will lead to literary, literary development. And Mughal rulers, in order to promote education, they built madarasa or schools. Madarasa and colleges. Colleges. Akbar, he arranged education for Hindus. That is the great contribution. Not only the Muslims, even Hindus. And a scholarship. Sajan, he gave scholarship to the students in order to promote education for the needy people, for excellent you know, students, he provided scholarship. And even various scholars were patronized by these different kings in the different period. A spread of education, as I said, that led to the spread of or development of literature. And here, some important uh, contribution of literature apart from Akbar during the period of Akbar we discussed along with that some other contributions that is Dara the son of uh, Shah Jahan Dara Sheikh he wrote uh, I mean translated Upanishads Upanishads to Persian language Babar wrote Babar Nama autobiography Abul Fazal wrote Akbar Nama Abul Fazal Akbar Nama Jangir's autobiography Farang Farang E. Jangiri. Farang E. Jangiri. Malik Muhammad Jaisi. He wrote Padma Vati. Padma Vati. Malik Muhammad Jaisi. He wrote Padma Vati. So, this is what the literary contribution made by you know Mughals and in the different period by different rulers and by looking at that what we can say they are the very generous rulers they provided opportunity for all round development not only Akbar even Sajan, Jangir and during the period of Umayyum we can see their contribution for the development of culture in India. And now we have to see the, their contribution to the art and architecture. A large number of buildings were built during the period of Mughals and they developed their own style of architecture especially you know Akbar, Jangir and Sajan they were the great builders of the period and they contributed a literary beauty to the nation or India. Let us see what was the important uh, 
architectural contribution of uh, you know Mughals. So they built different masjids in Fatehpur Sikri and Agra, Delhi and various other parts of their kingdom. At the same time, we have to note some important buildings. For example, Babar, he built, you know, Kabul Bag at Panipat, Jammu Masjid at Sambal, and even Bulal Darwaza at Matepur Sikh. So, this is the first ruler, Babar's contribution, so far as the architecture was concerned. But later, after Babar, Humayun came to power and who, there was no much contribution from Humayun so far as architecture was concerned. And we come to the Akbar, we have even Bulan Darwaza and highest gateway of India, Jam e Masjid that's in Fatehpur Sikri, tomb of Sheikh Sultan Chesti at Fatehpur Sikri and Panchamal at Fatehpur Sikri, place of Jodhbai, palace of Jodhbai, Diwani Am, Diwani Kaza, these are all built by Akbar at Fatehpur Sikri. Jangir, he built one mosque that is Bad Shahi Mosque, that is at Lahore. And when we come to Sajan, Sajan is a great builder among the Mughals. And here, Sajan built Taj Mahal, that is at Agra, Jammu Masjid at Agra, Moti Masjid at Agra, Red Fort at Delhi, Diwani Am, Diwani Kaza, Red Fort, the Peacock Throne, and all these. That's at Delhi. This is a great contribution made by Saja. Coming to Taj Mahal, a special building which was constructed by, you know, Saja as a token of love. That is Mamtaj Mahal, his wife Mamtaj Mahal. So this building is a special building and belonged to wonders of the world. And here, his wife, Archumda Banu Begum. It is a full name and what we call Mamtaj Mahal. So in her memory, he built this Taj Mahal at uh, Agra. And the art of painting greatly developed under the Mughal Emperor. And here, this Mahal, Taj Mahal was built on the river banks of, uh, you know, Yamuna. So this, apart from this, they also contributed for music. Music gave much importance for music and all the rulers except Aurangadeb, they were the pattern, patronizer of music. And some important musician of the period, Tansen, Ramdas, Briju Bhava, Briju Bhava, and Surdas. This Tansen was the greatest, you know, uh, musician in the court of Akbar. So, in this way, this various kings of, you know, Mughals, they made a very good contribution for Indian culture. Thank you very much. 
forget to like our video and subscribe our YouTube channel for all the updates.